What's up everyone, my name is Sal Sincata. I am a professional wedding and portrait photographer based in O'Fallon, Illinois. Uh, and today I'm gonna to talk to you real quick about the importance of monitor calibration uh, for your editing workflow. And so a lot of people, I think they tend to, there's two different schools of thought, I think. One is, um, I don't need it. Uh, my monitor comes calibrated. I've had that conversation many times. Um, and, uh, or they're on the other end where they are like fanatical uh, about it, right? And so really this is, if you've never calibrated your monitor or don't really understand why, this is probably a really good video for you to watch. Breaks it down, super simple. So let's kind of uh, dive into it, right? As you know, as a photographer, we use tons of different cameras, lenses. We spend all this money on all this equipment. We say we are uh, neurotic about color, but then when it comes down to that final kind of 10 yards, if you will, uh, everything falls apart. We're not calibrating our monitors. We're editing on different machines. Um, we're looking at images on our phone. We're like. You've got to understand from like a color perspective, like it makes me want to twitch uh, because your color is wrong. Then when you go to print it, it's going to look even uh, more different, right? You're going to get mixed results. So what does a typical workflow look like for me in the field? And so I'm going to pull up a shoot here uh, and just show you, I'm going to show you a couple of things, like what I'm doing in the field uh, and what I'm doing when I get uh, back to my computer and how easy that is and why it matters, okay? And so, one, uh, I use this uh, I, nifty little tool. Uh, it's a spider cube, and I absolutely love it. I mean, it is small, it's tiny, I keep it in my bag. And um, what's gonna happen, I'm gonna show you this on the screen, is you just gotta take one shot, right? So all you're gonna do is you're gonna hold this up. You can actually use this for video work as well. So we use it for both video and photo. And what this is gonna give you is your tonal range, right? So it's gonna get uh, highlights and shadows dialed in. I'm gonna show you how to do it super easy, again, my philosophy is always equipment should never get in the way of the shot. It should really help you be uh, better and help your workflow. And so I'm gonna just use this, I'm gonna take one frame. You're seeing that on the screen. And so workflow and color starts in the field. It doesn't just start in post-production. So the things you do in the field are gonna make what you do in post-production that much easier. And so look, if you've got multiple cameras, lighting situations, uh, lights coming in and out, the, you want that tonal range to look right across all your images. And so what I tend to do is I'll take this shot and it, you could do it in studio, you can do it on location. Uh, if lighting changes, I'll take another shot with this. And once you get this image into Lightroom, obviously the focus should be on the cube. Once you get this image in the Lightroom, you're just gonna go into develop uh, and we are gonna select the uh, wand tool just use W and uh, oh, before I say that, you're gonna hit the shortcut key is J. And what that's gonna do is that's gonna show your clipping. So if you're looking at the screen right now, as I turn the brightness up, right, you can see it's showing where we're clipping the image. And it's, it's in contrast, it's connected to the histogram in the top right hand corner. So that's how we use these things. And then if we go down the other way, uh, it's gonna show where we're just clipping uh, shadows, right? So this is a, it's a really good uh, starting point for that kind of stuff. So the first thing I wanna do on this image is, um, right, I can use the, the gray, right? Click in there, that's gonna help me get my white balance. And I will tell you, it's not always gonna be perfect, right? So sometimes you might have to zoom in and you've gotta check, right? You can see that I'm gonna get different color if I click on the shadow side or the highlight side, it does, make, it does make a difference, right? So I've clicked on the shadow side here, uh, and then what I'm gonna do is start lifting exposure, and what I'm watching now is this little guy, right? So you can see I'm already clipping highlights. So that's kind of what that's used for. And so as I keep going, you see that red spot, she's showing me I'm clipping highlights way too much. So uh, this is, again, working with that histogram on the right. So of course, some of us like images a little brighter, a little darker. You're gonna find what works for you, but that's gonna be your kind of litmus test here. So for this particular image, right, I, if I try to get rid of it all, right, remember that's your kind of specular highlight there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this uh, till I see it start kind of looking. I don't wanna clip these triangles here, okay? So about a half a stop. Now that doesn't surprise me because I know the way I shoot, I'm typically a half a stop underexposed uh, in the way I work, in my workflow, right? So the camera, what you see on the back of your camera, you ever feel that way? You get back into post-production and it doesn't look anything like uh, what you saw on the back of your camera. It's because those little LCD screens, man, 
the way they're set up, it's not gonna look the same on your computer. And by the way, it's not gonna look the same as when you print. So this is you know, kind of the first set of steps in the workflow. So if I just zoom out here, I see that brightness, that looks good. Now, this little hole here is not by accident. What I'm gonna do is grab my blacks and I'm gonna start dragging blacks down until, see how that's now turned blue? Uh, that is, that means that's where we're starting uh, to clip some shadows. So I usually go, because I like a little bit, little bit more punchy, so I'll clip to that. Uh, then I'll just come in here, maybe warm this image up a little bit, right? Again, skin tones are different, all that kind of stuff. This looks about where I want it to be. The tint is right. Now I've kind of got a standard, remember this isn't color, this is uh, your tonal range. So now I'm gonna use that and sync my images in Lightroom, right? So whether you're using a uh, uh, PC or a uh, Mac, on a Mac, it's Command Shift S. That's gonna bring up your sync settings. I'm just gonna say synchronize everything here. And now that's kind of, that's my starting point on that image. And as we go through these now, now we can make micro adjustments if we want. Okay, so we're going through here. Now, you might be tempted to look at her blouse and think it's blown out. It's actually not, right? And again, that's, that's the challenge with working on these LCD screens. So what's happening here is you can absolutely see, right? The histogram never lies. So we could actually come up, keep going. Detail's still there. Now we're starting to actually lose detail. Now, of course, this is way too bright, right? Um, I'm just trying to show you where we wanna be in that. Um, so if we come down in here, and remember, you're gonna, you're gonna find your, where you like being. Uh, you can add your vignette, all your other editing. This is just to kind of get your tonal range uh, right on this and to really see the difference this made. Remember, I have not done a whole lot of other adjustments to it. We haven't done any toning, any clarity, or any of that other stuff. This is just straight up highlights, shadows, right? To get that kind of contrast in sync. If I reset this to zero, that's what it looked like when we opened it, right? Adjustment, reset. So, Again, it's seasoned to taste. So as you start finding your profile, this cube is gonna serve as your starting point, okay? And so I think it's very important. All right, so how do we get into calibrating the actu actual uh, monitor? So just a couple of things. Um, if you're on the Mac platform, Apple is notoriously blue. So what you're seeing on your screen right now, right? So the, the, this is the kind of oxymoron of it all. You're watching me on a YouTube video that's been compressed that on a monitor that might not be calibrated and you're watching me calibrate a monitor and you're gonna go, well, that doesn't look right. Yep, yeah, right. I mean, it makes you wanna explode. So here's what you have to think about. Mac monitors right out of the gate are notoriously blue. That's just how it is. So if you're calibrating to your monitor, uh, I'm sorry, if you're editing to your monitor and, the, uh, and you haven't calibrated it, it's wrong. And what comes back from the printer either is not gonna be right or their color cal or their um, color correcting on their end, which I never want the labs to color correct my images, right? I'd rather control my own destiny here. Uh, then if you go look at your image on your phone, looks completely different. If you go edit uh, on another monitor, it looks completely dim different. If you have dual monitors that aren't from the same manufacturer, they're gonna look different as you slide it from monitor to monitor, right? That's why. And so, this becomes really, really an important step in the process, but it's not even a complicated step. So I use uh, Data Color Spider X Elite, and there is a difference between the two. So between uh, the Spider X Pro and Spider X Elite, I, I like Elite the best, a little more money, uh, but it's worth it for the features you're getting. So two of the features that are very important to me, uh, one is on the Spider X Elite, the ability to calibrate multiple monitors. Uh, to the same profile. So that becomes important if you're using your laptop and then you got a side monitor, right? You want those two to be consistent. Uh, or if you're using in your studio, let's say there's a bunch of you and all your monitors should look the same. The images, imagery should look the same. With the Spider X Elite, you have the ability to calibrate all those monitors to the same uh, color space. So I think that's really important. And in today's day and age, if you're doing any video, uh, the Spider X Elite supports video profiles, right? So one we use is Rec 709. We don't have to get into all that, but those profiles are built in so that again, what we're seeing on our monitors 
is being edited to the profiles that we're choosing in post-production, uh, along with many other features. But those two features alone are why I chose the Elite over the, the Pro. So if in your head you're like, which one should I go with? That's the why behind it. So if you've got multiple monitors set up, multiple computers that you're looking on, the Elite is probably the right tool. And if you're doing video editing at all, the Elite is the, the way you wanna go. So what do we gotta do? First of all, this is in my bag at all times. So wherever I travel, this thing's in my bag, right? Super compact, comes apart. Uh, and what we'll do is we'll start this up, okay? And we'll just launch Spider X Elite. And that's gonna launch the interface uh, for calibrating. Okay, just plug this in. Now it is USB B, is that right? It's a USB 2, I should say. So it is USB 2. Um, hopefully at some point, right, with all the new Mac users, we hope they'll upgrade it to USB C, uh, and that'll make it much easier to just kind of work with. Which, so you gotta have a dongle or something like that. All right, so you're just gonna click uh, calibrate my displays. Make sure your monitor is warmed up, you're in the correct lighting uh, conditions, right? All that stuff is set uh, to default. Uh, you're gonna wanna select, right, wide LED, standard LED general, we chose wide, right? And then it's just gonna take you step by step and I'm gonna have it do a full calibration. Now, in the past, some of those uh, calibration uh, processes would take a while. They, you know, they took, it just seemed like it took forever. This is really fast. Uh, so the white point, we're using 6500, that's recommended. Brightness, do, do not adjust. I don't, some, some uh, monitor calibrations will adjust the brightness on the LED um, on your monitors. I don't like that. So I keep it, do not adjust the brightness uh, and then gamma 2.2. Again, this is all walking you through the process. Now you just drop your monitor right there, all right? Kind of X marks the spot, make it easy for you. Hit next. And this thing's gonna run, it, run uh, gamut, so to speak. Uh, it's gonna run through all the colors. And when we're done on the other end of this, it's gonna have a profile set up for my monitor, which I can save that color profile. I could share that color profile. I would not recommend it because no matter how much you wanna think that I've got three Apple laptops uh, or app Mac monitors, they're all the same. Uh, unfortunately, what happens is over time, the brightness, the colors, pixels, maybe they came from set different factories. Color's just not the same, in my opinion. Uh, so I like to run this on each one. And if I had a secondary monitor plugged on this, as soon as this is over, I can kind of drag it over to the second monitor, calibrate that. So now together, these two are calibrated. Uh, and so it's already 75% of the way through the process. And again, once this is completed, I'm gonna show you the difference between a calibrated monitor and an uncalibrated monitor. And it's gonna, I think it's gonna blow your mind. So if you are a photographer and you care about color, which so many photographers care about what lens they're using, what lighting they're using, and they focus on their you know, black points, white points, and all these kind of things. Why aren't you focused on color? Uh, and this could not be easier. What you see is what you get. And again, as a, a working professional, to me, there's nothing more important than making sure that my highlights, my shadows, right? I don't wanna clip highlights, I don't wanna block up shadows, and I wanna get my color right, so that when I send that to the lab, or I deliver to my client that I know that what I've delivered them is a perfect image that I've completed the process for. All right, so this is finished now. Okay, I'm just gonna remove this here. Like I said, this work is done. Collapse it, Velcro it, goes in my bag so that it's always with me. Uh, on the screen, you're gonna see, it's gonna say, hey, name and save your new profile. I just kind of, uh, there's no reason for you to go back into old profiles. Uh, so for me, I just use the same uh, profile, a Apple Color LCD-1 because the default is Apple Color LCD. Uh, I hit save, remind me in a month, okay? I don't know, different schools of thought say you only have to calibrate your monitor once. I don't know, we, we do a lot of imagery and I just feel like calibration starts to drift. I don't know if that's in my head or not, but we calibrate uh, you know, kind of every month, every couple of weeks. Hit save, okay, now that profile's been saved, you hit next. And now it's gonna show you, right, just this kind of grid of images so that you can see, hey, look at all these different skin tones and black and white, so you can see tonal range. Check this out, this is crazy. So I'm gonna turn it on and off. You tell me if you see the difference. So that's without, that's uncalibrated. That's default, 
Apple settings. And I promise you, PCs are the same way. That's the calibration. If you're not looking at this going, holy smokes, that is a big difference, I don't know what you're doing. So even if you're watching this on YouTube and it's a compressed video, you're still seeing a before and after that is quite significant. So now, imagine what that's gonna look like on your images and on your work. So guys, couldn't be easier. I hope this makes sense. I hope this is at least compelling enough for you uh, to start calibrating if you're not. And if you are using a calibration tool today and you're considering upgrading to a better one, uh, my money is on the Spider X Elite. Uh, for the reasons I highlighted. You're gonna be able to calibrate multiple monitors uh, that are plugged in. You're gonna be able to calibrate any that are in your studio so that they're all the same. Maybe you're using one in your preview room, right? You wanna calibrate your TV as your secondary monitor. Uh, or if you're doing any kind of video production, this has those common video profiles built in like Rec 709, things like that, so that everything is speaking the same language. Again, my name is Sal Sincata. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I've convinced you to start calibrating.